Hello and welcome to this um, explainer video for Harvard Referencing and Plagiarism. It's primarily set for level 3 work um, to accompany um, a course that I teach for Adult Learning Wales called the Award in Education and Training. Um, however, the quality of the referencing I'm going to talk about will also suit level 4 and maybe level 5. You have more to do for level 6 and beyond and um, it's always worth checking with your organisation and institution for their methods of referencing. So, let's get into it. <clears throat> okay, so what is referencing? Referencing is acknowledging other people's work to allow, and it also allows the reader to locate your source material. It provides validity to your arguments, and it links what you've written to the evidence on which it is based. Okay, so... Um, for the award in education and training, we tend to use Ang Gravel's here. There are other books, such as the um, City and Guild's Award in Education and Training. Um, for referencing, this is a very good book. Palgrave Study Skills Cite Them Right, The Essential Referencing Guide. This will give you lots of different types of referencing. Um, and for Harvard referencing, it will give you all the different types of material, including Acts of Parliament, um, different different approaches for TV programs etc. It is very very good um, and I would recommend if you're going on to further education or higher education you have a look at purchasing that book. The earlier editions are very affordable and are still very good and useful as well. And there's another one that's quite useful, Harvard Format Citation Guide from Mendeley. You just go to mendeley.com and have a look for their citation guide. <coughs> Okay, so here are just some sort of samples. Um, if you suspect plagiarism, then you should consult your organization's plagiarism. So if you're a tutor or a lecturer and you think there's plagiarism, you need to check the procedure. But also as a student writing your own work, you need to have a look to make sure you're not falling foul of this. Um, it is important that learners take responsibility for their referencing. And this is just a written reference here. Okay, so <coughs> keeping those from the previous page, we've got three question marks here. So there are three basic types of things to remember for referencing. There are more, but that's level six and beyond, and then you talk to your organisation about those. So the first thing is citation. Citation is when we cite it in the text. So in the text, I'm writing away a paragraph or something like that, but this particular content is my own words, but I'm using Gravel's to create those words. I'm taking her idea and putting it in my own words. So I'm paraphrasing her. So therefore, I note the author and the date, and that's called my citation, cited in the text. Um, the other type of citation or common type is a quote. And with quote, the, the citation goes in, the, the words that you're taking go in um, um, exclamation, uh, speech marks. And that is what you've actually taken. That's word for word from Angravels, the year of the book. It's on page 157. If it's more than one page, 1572, whatever. So with a, a citation, you note the page number. Or a, refer a quote, you note the page number. Oh, it's been a long day. So, um, and then every time that you use a citation in a source, you need to write the full reference at the end in what we would call the reference list. If you can use an item in your reference list more than once, so there might be Gravels, in this case she cited here, and then there, I only need the reference once because it's the same source. So author, initials, date, in brackets in this case, Ward in Education and Training, Revised Edition, London, Sage Publication. So author, date, title, editions, if relevant, not always, location, publisher. Notice that the um, title is in italics. Okay, why do we reference? It demonstrates our reading on the subject. It shows the evidence of our research. It establishes credibility to arguments and it enables the reader to locate the source material that we've used. It gives credit to the original author, which is the most important thing. 
and it distinguishes between writers' ideas and opinions from those of others. And by doing that, we need to reference to avoid plagiarism. So, when do we reference? Every time we use somebody else's work or ideas in our own work. What do we reference? All the sources that we've used in our written assignment, including information we cut and paste, repeat, word for word, paraphrase or summarise. If we don't do that, then what we're doing is we're taking somebody else's work or ideas and we're, we're, we're pretending that they're ours. And that is plagiarism. And that's what we're trying to avoid, is taking other people's content and pretending that it's yours, which is wrong. You just acknowledge where you've got it from. <coughs> OK. So, referencing identifies his sources in the text. Those are the citations and in the reference list. The reference list only includes sources cited in your text, which means it is not the same thing as a bibliography. Bibliography is a whole load of, it's a list of all of the things that you've read, but if you haven't used those in that assignment, then you don't include them in the reference list. And this is the um, reference entry for Pairs and Shields. Year, title in italics, location publisher, and that's what Pairs and Shields look like when you're citing them. And there's a quote. You probably should have put a space before the one there. OK. So, citation for Pairs and Shields, as I've said. Quote, as I've said, with the page number, remember. And then here's the entrance in the reference list itself. OK, so this just quickly explains what these things are. An in-text citation gives abbreviated details of the source being referenced, which links to the full written reference in the reference list. Remember, every entrance in your reference list must have a citation, or more than one citation, so at least one citation, in the text of your assignment. If there is no citation in the text, then you don't put it in the reference list. The abbreviated content includes the author, or authors and date, and if you're making a direct quote, you also need the page number. So here are just some examples, because with citations, if you're using the author's names in your writing, so for example, I might say, whilst well, I'm writing away, Answer and Goddard point out, then the citation, I just put the date in brackets. If I'm going to say recent research shows that something or other has happened, open brackets, sellers, comma, the year, that's the most common type of um, citation that you'll use. But you can also do like, here we go again, Sean, 1983 points, argues that. Um, there are some more. The further you go up in referencing, then there are some different layouts and some more advanced methods. But this should be fine for level 3, 4 and 5. Um, once again, check with your organisation. Analysis of the data demonstrates growth in Tipton et al. 2016. Now we'll look at this in a minute, but basically now two authors, one author, more than two authors. Tipton et al. et al. is and others. Always remember to use the dot after the al because al is a contraction, is a Latin contraction. And the year. OK, let's go on. So, forms of plagiarism. So, plagiarism is when you present somebody else's work as your own. It's if you use source of information word for word without the quotation marks. If you paraphrase or summarise material without acknowledging the original source. If you recycle previously submitted work from another module or course that you've done, for example, and that is self-plagiarism. Check with your organisation how you do that, but you can reference your own work, but that will depend upon um, your tutors and lecturers, so ask them. And if you cite and reference resources that you have not used, that's also a form of plagiarism, technically. Right, so how do we set them out? Well, the important things are to note the author or authors, date, title, publisher and location, so that's for a book. Note the title would be in Italian. Journal article, tutors are going to love you if you use journals. Author or authors, date, title, this time the journal number is in, journal title is in italics. 
volume number, issue number if it's there, page range. Internet, authors, date, title of the article or site, website, URL and the date you've accessed it. It's important that the date that you accessed it is included because websites can be updated. Okay. So, um, examples of some books, author, date, title in italics, location, uh, publisher location, that's the wrong way around, that should be location and then the publisher, so I've got that one wrong, and the most important thing is to be consistent in your referencing, so I'm not very consistent, so I'll be marked down for that one. Um, pairs and shields, so when in the reference list we include the initial as well, so pairs are shields G, citation it's just the author, um, year, cite them right, and this time I have got the location followed by the publisher. Cohan, Manon, Marison, so that's more than two. Research Methods and Education, Rankledge, London. Um, his citation would be Cohan et al, because it's more than two. Okay, so in the reference list, all the authors are used, as I've just said, but in the citation, it is the first author, followed by et al. Don't forget that dot after the al. Cohan et al, 2018. Uh, journals and internet just basically so we've got NHS 2015 if there isn't an author then it will be the author of that page or the organization of that page check your symptoms now I should have put that in italics I haven't my mistake not consistent again available at dot dot and then you put the URL the website which is in this case http www dot and then you put the date that you've accessed it on. So access the 17th of October 2015. Um, journal, author, date, title of the article, the journal name. Now the journal name has gone in italics there. Um, that's what you would see on the shelf. If you were looking for this on the shelf like a book, that's what you see on the spine. That's the name of the journal. Volume number 13. Sometimes you put issue three. I tend to use the brackets. It's important to be consistent. So volume 13, issue three, and there's the page range. Once again, the exact layout will depend upon your organization. Not so important at level three. Um, we're just looking for you to develop Harvard referencing ready for when you go on to other things, but also to avoid plagiarism. Okay, so that's the end of that little PowerPoint there. I'm um, just going to quickly talk about something that's a really useful thing to do during all of your studies and that's just to create a bibliography. Bibliography, when you look at a source or whatever, note it down in case you need it in the future. And I'd recommend you write them out like this, author, date, title, publisher, location. You might want to do location then publisher. Um, that just helps you when you come to write out your references later on for a bibliography for websites etc author date title link date you've accessed it journal author title title of article sorry date title of article journal name issue number and volume number if there is sometimes you won't have an issue number so volume number is the only one and then um the page range. So that's it. Thank you very much and I hope that helps you.